processor is a computer that's integrated onto silicon and certainly starts off definition wise as having a, a processing unit, uh, arithmetic unit, the ability to uh, decode instructions, execute instructions, do arithmetic, etc. Let's start off in 1974, the first all-electric programmable computer, ENIAC, initially used to calculate artillery trajectory with 17,000 transistors, a clock speed of 5 kilohertz, and weighing a massive 27 tons, this behemoth of a computer beat out its electromechanical counterpart in two ways, its ability to be reprogrammed for a wide variety of functions, and that it operated 1,000 times faster. Let's move on to another historic computer, one that took man to the moon. The Apollo guidance computer developed in 1966 weighing a mere 70 pounds yet still managing to pack 17,000 transistors. Operating at a 2 MHz clock speed, this machine provided computational and electronic interfaces for guidance, navigation, and control of the spacecraft. The first usage of the word microprocessor was by Viatron in 1968, referring to the 2140 and 2150 processors found in the System 21, which was used to describe the custom integrated circuits. But these processors were not a single integrated circuit, but many integrated circuits connected to each other, which does not meet our definition of a microprocessor. Besides the usage of the word microprocessor, this computer was not memorable. The first commercially available microprocessor was the Intel 4004. It was a 4-bit CPU that held 2,300 transistors on a single programmable chip and had a circuit line width of 10 micrometers. It ran at a clock speed of 108 kilohertz and only weighed a few grams. Although the Intel 4004 was the first commercially available microprocessor, the first microprocessor to be created was the Texas Instruments TMS-1000, a 4-bit processor that was used to power the Texas Instruments Data Math Calculator released in 1971. But Texas Instruments failed to release the processor to the commercial market until 1974 three years after Intel. Fast forward two decades and we get to the point where the main goal is to break barriers previously thought unbreakable. The first major barrier broken was by the Intel i860 in 1989 that had over 1 million transistors on a single microprocessor, an exponential increase. Later, the 1 GHz barrier was broken by the AMD Athlon 1000 released in 2000. Soon after, AMD made a revolutionary step forward by integrating two microprocessors onto the same chip making the world's first dual-core processor, the AMD Athlon X2, released in 2007. Then, Intel improves on multi-core technology by creating the world's first quad-core processor, the Intel Core 2 Quad. Currently, the highest processor clock speed is 8.429 GHz by the AMD FX processor, and the microprocessor with the highest transistor count is the IBM Neuromorphic True North processor with 5.4 billion transistors. Microprocessors have made it into many places that you might not know, and have allowed for many new inventions. One of these technologies would be GPS. The first experimental Block 1 GPS satellite was launched in 1968. Later, in 1991, a project to create a miniature GPS receiver using microprocessors successfully developed a 2.75 pound receiver to replace the previous 50 pound receiver. In 1996, GPS became available for civilian use, and eventually the GPS technology was released into mobile phones in 1999. Previously, cars were purely mechanical, but with cheap and reliable microprocessors, cars have begun to contain onboard computers. The current consumer cars. So, whether it be lane departure warnings, which is already in many cars today, or following capability where you can set a following distance to the car in front of you, or a capability to automatically apply the brakes if a, if a human being, a kid runs in the street in front of you, or rear view cameras, and many things that are the cameras, the control systems, and so on, the optical sensing and other kinds of sensing, um, uh, blind spot monitoring, all these things are going into cars today. Currently, a car's computer can control things such as fuel injection, automatic transmission, traction control, anti-lock brakes, airbag sensors, diagnostic tools, advanced safety features, and some cars can even contain an autopilot system. The integration of the microprocessor into weaponry started in late 1971, when the American fighter jet became equipped with onboard computers able to outperform actions of a mechanical system. 
Then with the creation of GPS, more advanced targeting systems were created for missiles allowing for long-range deployment. The microprocessor has also allowed for the deployment of robots to perform extremely dangerous tasks like mine diffusing, as well as the deployment of unmanned drones. Previously, small systems were handled by mechanical systems. Due to basic microprocessors being incredibly cheap and reliable, many household products are integrating microprocessors such as ovens, teapots, microwaves, toasters, refrigerators, TVs, climate control, and watches. The idea of a telephone performing computer functions isn't new, and the first design for a telephone that could perform the same functions as a computer was first patented in 1973. The first commercially available smartphone was the Simon Personal Communicator. Early smartphones ran operating systems like Windows Mobile, BlackBerry, and Symbian. These operating systems were, label were later overtaken by the much more popular iOS and Android operating systems, with some of these operating systems still remaining, but with much smaller market share. With high-speed microprocessors that are able to power robots that can replace the human workforce in factories, a once reliable source of employment was replaced because of the microprocessor. Prior to computers, pirated copies of movies and music was not much of an issue. But with widespread computers made possible with microprocessors, pirating became much more common. With computers, a single digital copy of a movie, song, book, or game can be redistributed infinitely. It also brought back independent manufacturers. After the industrial age, a single person would be unable to compete with a large factory on a meaningful level. But with the rise of computers, a single person can create a program that competes with and sometimes surpasses that of a large corporation. It has created many industries as well, like smartphones, home computers, electronic stock trading, and robotics. Microprocessors have also allowed for the creation of the internet, which has increased the flow of information tremendously. With online newspapers, forms, and bulletins, information can travel in a matter of seconds to anywhere in the world. Video and music sharing services have provided a new outlet for people to express themselves. And there are places where a person can post a video and possibly achieve the popularity of a box office film. The internet has also aided in the organization of people. With social media, reconnecting with lost friends as well as organizing events has become much easier. The internet has also allowed for people to circumnavigate censorship and spread information that their government does not want spread. It has also given world governments a new way to collect data around the world. I think the microprocessor has left a huge legacy. And the way that one can test that sort of thing is look at what we do now, kind of on, in daily life, as a student or as a, as a working professional, and look at how we use microprocessor and, and technology. And then conceptually walk backwards in history 50 years. And you can see such a dramatic change that you can tell that you know it's not just uh, a certain technology is that society has been changed. It's, uh, I would say at least as dramatic as deployment of electricity for lighting, which changed social behavior, you know, 100 years before. I think now today it's reached so far that uh, everybody who uses all these different devices, whether they're cell phones, tablets, laptops, they certainly like have some appreciation on a, on a mass scale as to the fact that uh, microprocessors essentially changed the world for forever. <laughs> Yes, microprocessors uh, have acted as a leader, I think, in two ways. One is they've been leading the technology along. So in other words, they were invented first and started to be used as devices and things from traffic lights and microwave ovens and you know, you know little things where people didn't really know that they were there. That kind of a leadership, in other words, being out in front of everybody using them. And then from the point of view of leading you know, from the economy and the whole internet revolution, certainly there is Yeah, all. the microprocessor is the leading technology of the digital revolution. More than any other single technology has changed how we all live in the last 50 years. There's, there's just no other technology that's changed as radically modern life. I mean, we're talking of, of um, not just, we're talking science, technology, medicine, energy, transportation, entertainment, recreation, habitation, arts. The microprocessor not only, not only led, but dominates.